Henry Kissinger, sir. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mr. President? Yeah. I've read the Wilson column, and it says exactly the opposite of what the news summary said. Yeah. It gives exactly our line. Let me just read you the first paragraph. Yeah. The Democratic candidates for the presidency have brilliantly succeeded in opening up their own credibility gap on one of the most critical questions of the time, agreement between the United States and Russia on curbing the bomb. To a man, these aspirants have made a political issue of the most serious business afoot in international affairs. And to a man, they have been wrong. They chorused and parroted the idea that to go ahead with the ABM and safeguard system was a provocative act which would submarine the talks and that therefore we, which must stop this program dead in its track. Mm -hmm. Deployment of the safeguard proclaimed Senator Muskie in May is a provocation we cannot afford. And then he lists a lot of them, uh, what they all said. Yeah. And then he says, uh, uh, so we went ahead with the ABM system uh, and President Nixon was able to announce that we had gotten off that center in this all talks. The Russians agreed to move towards an agreement uh, to, on ABM and offensive weapons deployment, thus breaking a critical impasse with a secondary effect of exposing the faulty judgment of the Democratic prophets on the Senate side of the Capitol. Mm. And it goes on and on like this. Well, how in the world? Do you have a new summary in front of you? Yeah. What does it read? Just yeah, I got it here. It says, uh, uh, Richard Wilson looks at Democratic White House contenders and their criticism of ABM, a move which uh, deployment, a move which turns out to have helped bring about salt progress. But what's helped bring about salt progress is the ABM. That's it's a poorly written. Sentence. Oh, maybe maybe that's what they intended. Maybe they were just writing it. Uh, I see your point. Maybe it, I see the sentence is written. May, I don't think they could possibly have read the column and written it and put it this way. That's right. I see. Oh, no. What they, they probably meant that the deployment, you know, it sure does, it sure cr creates exactly the opposite impression. You read that then. If so. you read it quickly, it yeah. gets exactly yeah. what it says here. What is evident is that Mr. Nixon knows better how to go about moving towards an agreement than his opponents in the Senate. Their faces should become all the redder when they consider that the movement in the Salt Talks is accompanied by Soviet initiative in discussing mutual troop reductions in Europe. Mm -hmm. All of these fundamental and critical problems have been made political issues with a highly virulent contact. Mm -hmm. From any detached point of view, this is de de yeah. deplorable. Well, and so on and so forth. Couldn't be a better column. That's, it's, uh, it's, it's if better. we had written it, Mr. Yeah. President, it, yeah. would, it couldn't yeah. have been better. Well, I'm glad to see that. I, You know, you read these, I read a news from you, you get the impression that no, you know, everybody's, I, everybody, was, uh, everybody's up. Because, maybe, they're, maybe they're wrong on the Buckley one. You just never know about Because that. we worked uh, Wilts and Nova. Yeah. And, and on uh, Buckley, and, they may not have understood that either. And but. he's a gentleman. Well, he's an honest reporter. And uh, the same with the Alsop column. The Alsop one is quite a good one. The Alsop yeah. says, look, this is a tough president. Yeah. If he doesn't get an agreement, he'll do what's necessary sure. to protect us. That's right. That's well, that's what we want. Exactly. It may be, it may be that the fellows, this isn't Buchanan, this is, this is the, uh, the news summary guys, that, and they're uh, pretty conservative people, and maybe that they... They're kind of uh, trying to, I mean, they may load it a little. I don't know. They, uh, you you well, see what I'm it, getting at? I'm it may not... be sloppy riding, Mr. President, because yeah. it says... Well, they do this in a hurry. I an know. APM deployment, a move which helped break the deadlock. It's the move, it's yeah, the APM it. deployment, yeah. not what the yeah. critics said. Yeah, well, I don't criticize them. They work fast and hard. I just didn't, I just couldn't imagine what the hell it was. But I was astonished when yeah. you called me. Yeah. Yeah, well, and and you, actually, this column yeah. is, we couldn't have written yeah, I know. more positively yeah, ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's and right. I'm getting the Buckley one. That, uh, and I, well, that one don't bother me with, but just follow up with him directly. He is sort of the Bible to these young people and right. young conservatives. I'll get Buckley around, yeah. Mr. President. But Buckley, uh, Buckley should be, he should understand this damn thing. I'll have no problem. Yeah. Fine, bye. <laughs> Yeah. Mr. Haldeman, sir. Yeah. On the line, sir. Hello. At Lockheed, there'd be there are 31,000 that would be affected. 17,000 on Lockheed's payroll and 14,000 on Lockheed suppliers' payrolls. Okay. On that contract. 
Fine. The total Lockheed employment role is 90,000. Yeah. If they go broke, they'd all lose their jobs. But, yeah. but the other one, the 31, is the contract figure. Yeah. Fine. Then on the gun control, it gets a little complicated. We we launched a study when we came in yeah. uh, because the Gun Control Act of 68 prohibited import of those guns, but not domestic manufacture of them. Yeah. So we've been testing the domestically manufactured ones, and we're trying to draw a set of objective criteria at which time we will propose legislation, but we haven't done it. To Which would outlaw this kind of thing? No, it's to plug the loopholes. So our legislation would be to to require that only guns that met certain criteria could be manufactured and sold. Mm -hmm. And so the ones that can't hit the targets or don't hold up would yeah. be outlawed. Yeah. But not necessarily just because of price. Yeah. Yeah. Or you say it's... So uh, we have been in the process in understudy, yeah. of extensive testing in order to develop criteria for legislation to plug the loophole in this. With regard to manufacture. Right? Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Kissinger, Mr. President. Yeah. 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 He Hello, Mr. President. Yeah, Henry, what is the on the salt thing? I uh, was wondering about what precisely should be said. I think I should indicate that uh, I probably should use the date January 8th. If I... 9th is actually the correct date. Well, what do we what do we put out? If we put that date out yeah. uh, in all the corrected versions. Yeah. All right. On January 9th, I sent a message to the Soviet leaders. Fine. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do I say? The message uh, such that uh, I wouldn't go into any greater details, which okay. led to the which led to the announcement on May 20th. Well, that will it's say which led to an exchange, which produced the announcement. Mm -hmm. I would make sure that you'd get in there somewhere that. The Soviets also made a major contribution yeah. in this discussion. And uh, we describe it as, uh, let me just, because I think it's well to get the description again. Uh, what, what, what can we say in the simplest terms? Well, a communication with my ideas of how to break the deadlock. No, 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 as to what we agreed. What we agreed was uh, that there would be... That we would concentrate this year. Well, I wouldn't yeah. emphasize that we would concentrate, that we would... Uh, well, yeah, well, that we'd concentrate. That's what it says in the... That's what it says I know, the but uh, that we'd uh, I'm not gonna work on ABM around. and that there would be simultaneously some agreement on offensive limitations. On on some agreement on offensive limitations. Now, then they will ask you, is the agreement on offensive limitations going to be less formal? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's a matter for negotiation. I say it's a matter for negotiation, but if you wanted to expand, you could say the difference is that ABM covers the whole field, while offensive ones uh, leave some matters out, and therefore... I'm afraid to get into that. Okay. Afraid, I don't think we better better go beyond that. Okay. That can be done in background. I've That's done that in background. Yeah. It's just a question right. of how much detail right. you want. Okay, thanks. Right. Ms. Wallace. Yes, please. Operator, <clears throat> would you hold uh, all of my calls, please, uh, after 9 o'clock tonight? Hold them after 9? Yeah. Yes, I, sir. I'm having a press yeah. conference, and then after that, I have some other things I have to do. Right, so thank you, sir. I don't want any interruptions. Yeah. Okay. You'll be glad to, Mr. President. Bye. Bye. Hello. Hello. Bob? Another good one. Well, they, uh, they were really good. Yeah. It all ganged up, apparently, on, the, on that damn May Day thing. The, it's really, it's really, Ron ought to really be rough on them. That was pretty sorry. Before. Yep. I mean, every one of them. And, uh, you know, John Shankler, all of them. Moting about it. I mean, Boris, Boyd, even he. I know that was amazing that he. Yeah, but he the got whole, but incidentally, don't don't. I mean, of course, you're going to find Barman, Sapphire, and the rest. Don't worry about that. That couldn't have been better for us. No, that's you're absolutely. Or don't right. you agree? I absolutely. That's what we want. We want to get that point across. That allowed me for once to get across the fact that I was for the police. You're darn right. I no, suppose you, I suppose your left wingers don't agree with that. Well, I haven't gotten any 
feeling from anybody on that, but the, uh, uh, on the, the network thing, they made the point, for like ABC, and they did a very quick wrap-up and made the point that you know, the president spoke out more directly on the May Day matter than he had previously said the police would use the right combination firmness and restraint those participating in the panels and lawbreakers denied constitutional rights violated said that panels will not be tolerated. Chancellor afterwards uh, made that point but didn't, uh, didn't really go into it much. I mean, he said what the thing that fascinated him was this the follow-up, you know, just the uh, the technique or the fact that there was follow-up, which a couple others have noted too. Well, and, they all can come. That's fine. He, he I don't made, mind. I don't. He made the point that the president supported the police absolutely, which he probably thought was bad. But uh, uh, well, he hasn't read the polls, Bob. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And uh, Mud afterwards on CBS he made the same die. same point. No, he said the high point of the press conference was the follow-up on May Day and the interaction between the president. And Reporters, you know. Calb said that's the first time this has happened in a lot. But it's kind of interesting. Just starting to get some of the stuff in. But the one call I got was from the uh, mayor of Tulsa, Oklahoma, Robert LaFortune, and he he said uh, about the president's discussion of the May Day demonstrations was excellent. It would bolster morale and spirit of law enforcement officers throughout the country. And it's uh, I think you're going to get a lot of that, a lot of positive reaction on that. We didn't have any other choice. Back in the hell, that was a constitutional right. What the hell? That's what, that's what you have to do. On well, Brady Black, uh, the Cincinnati Inquirer says, President was especially firm and forceful on law and order, putting the May Day demonstrations in perspective and pointing out the pattern for other cities. He also mentions the UAR thing. A lot of them seem to have mentioned that, the Egypt Treaty. Well, but if they put it in arms. Yeah. Oh, meet Alcorn. Is one of the best press conferences the president has had. Specifically, the May Day demonstration answer was by far the best. It showed a command and firmness that was good. And, and on the, then he said, secondly, the McCloskey question. He admired the way the president handled it with a comment that it could be a booby trap. He said that he thinks he should do more. You mean that more pointing out that I would not. Uh, well, he was right. saying it could be a booby trap, getting into it, but that you would yeah. handle it right. And, and, uh, that was good. I got all political questions answered for everything. Yeah, that's right. And Don Goodnot, the L.A. Examiner, says the president gave a strong defense of the police action in handling the recent demonstration in Washington. It was an intelligence presentation. It was something that was needed. I thought he was quite cool. And this is a good point. Instead of attacking the courts, he defended the system. Which is a little hard to defend. Well, but it, it was still good uh, Good point. And I think you you got some some pretty good things in on there too. The <laughs> slap on Sarah and her oversupply of goods in Vietnam. You're concerned with bringing that home. But I think too that uh, the point at the end about credibility. Right? Might have some Excellent. The easiest. If I had all the problems, I'd be. You think that got across? Yeah. Very much, so. very much so. That uh, like the drug thing. That was, yeah. Dick Moore's thing was the president, uh, as usual, was way ahead. The president's answer on credibility was perfect. He particularly liked the comparison between demonstrators, like the vandals and lawbreakers. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing of pointing out that the police took greater care of the rights of those arrested than the arrested persons did of the rights of the citizens. Yeah. Uh, he more like that. John Conley says. Uh, interesting. Says, the president did exceedingly well. I find myself frustrated again because of the emphasis on Vietnam rather than domestic issues. The president looked relaxed, natural, and his facial expression was good. I liked, too, the way he cut off his answers, made them short. As I've said before, he should have as many of these as he himself can take because he's great and he makes the press look antagonistic as hell. It's a battle uh, Pat said that you've got to get a hold of good on this. agree that they as compared with the other press conference probably fools at the front camera angle. They said it's not as good tonight. They said somewhere or other sharper didn't have the camera angle. Did you notice that or not? Maybe, maybe they didn't. No. They, they're, they're very sensitive. Yeah, not. Yeah, no. don't, have them, don't have him fool with it. The last one would be very good. Right. And, uh, it may be that they're wrong. But, uh, 
said, well, let's see if they change anything. They should. Because we did have it. It was off the good. It is true that I had to turn to the right. I'm inclined to think what I might do in future press conferences is real camera. Why the hell do I look at the reporter at all? I think I should just turn to the camera and answer the camera. I would. Every goddamn question. No, really. Why do I look at Peter Lister, though? Screw him. You can look at him when he asks it, and then yeah. turn to the camera to answer it. The, so camera, the camera had moved like, to where the reporter was. As I did, you know, on that question on credibility. Turning to the camera, that's what the best thing to do. Do you think that she's probably right in there? Could be, yeah. Yeah. And the press doesn't like it, you know. But good God, we don't worry about the press. God damn what they do. She should You know, it's interesting, though, Bob, that all the big questions they had, they should have been mirroring them on the wall. They covered it. Jesus Christ screwed her out of a mayday. Now, what the hell? That most of the people just don't give a goddamn about it. Just think oh. we did the right thing. And a couple of the Vietnam questions were just repetitions. Oh, it's on, on about this. Why don't you get out? But still, out of 21 questions, there were only five on Vietnam, which yeah. is an all time record. I think. I think it was good. To well, then there were two more on POW, so we would have seven. Right discussion. Right. We're not going to make that same mistake again. So that you don't get anything. Mm -hmm. Well, make, make it clear we don't get anything from the game from doing it. But, uh, well, that's amazing. Not a single question on the economy. Nothing on not the a, no, nothing dollar look, in Europe. No, look, Buchanan had all these goddamn questions on the economy. On the euro dollar. On steel prices. Steel, steel prices. On... Uh, also, well, a lot of political questions, but I cut them off. I don't do that. Yep, I got that done. I'm sure glad you got that, that uh, dope question, because you really got, it was good to get into that. And I covered it pretty completely. Well, it was a good thing you did, because uh, you didn't get another chance at it. And I got to hit the marijuana. Got the marijuana loud and clear. That's agree with that. But if you just got to say a few more things to agree with folks. And I guess, sorry, no, I'm ready. This call from the wife of the president of Tuskegee Institute. She says she was particularly impressed with the attitude on drugs. The black, oh, they had all the, yeah. all the questions about it. the blacks. You know, the these bastards are only interested in something that we need to do. Yeah. Well, they're a pretty sad bunch of people. Yeah. But I think, I think it worked to your but benefit I think that, to get all those questions on May Day because you've got your law and order. May Day it really gets them in the law and order. That's right. They had one question. The whole thing. Well, they hit them hard on the, you know, the vandals and hoodlums and lawbreakers. And you're not going to screw around with that kind of stuff. I, right. I'm going to keep this government going. And, and huh? you, you said, I'm going to keep this government going. And, and period. They come back again. We'll do it again. And you get uh, don't let I don't let our liberals drop <laughs> get concerned about this. Thing. I don't think they will. They don't know about it, Bob. They don't know what people what 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 what's really right either. God damn it! These people are thugs, vandals, terrorists. That's what they are. You know they really are. Sure. Do you agree? Sure. God yeah. damn it! Well, let's stand up and say so. Made the point clearly on that. No, I think so. good shape on that. Okay. Anything else from your uh, That's just, just getting in. Oh, Connell, he, he's really great. He likes to really hit it. Yeah. Did he mention any particular question? Or just, no. No. Just to keep doing it. Chris, yeah, because he likes the he likes the format. You know the way you come yeah. through on him, but he he. Uh, He'd like to get into the domestic, but did you, you don't get what any the hell? How do you, questions? There's nothing look, you can do about but, it. You know, you talk to John. Did, have I ever got a question on the environment? 
have I ever have ever had a question on revenue sharing? Have I ever had a question on government reorganization? The answer is not one question about it. Next, on any of those subjects, you realize ever since the State of the Union, I have not had one question on any of those subjects, none, whatever. And since the State of the Union last year, not one of those subjects. Tonight, you, know, you, all, you got really two domestic questions, the women, well, the women for Christ's sake, is me, which is stupid, and the civil rights question. She asked a very stupid question, the civil rights question about the, well, about the civil rights. I thought it was well to hit Hesper, though, and find that he questioned the sincerity of the young, young civil rights. I think, you should, I think that's right. We should take this the, idea that, fine, yeah. that everybody else is. I don't question his, uh, as I said, I don't question his sincerity. Right. You should question ours. I didn't deliberately go into, you know, Buchanan and all the other things. Not Buchanan, but particularly all the other things. The list of things we've done for Negroes, I deliberately don't do it about them. Folks ain't for it. That's right. They aren't for food stamps. Yeah. They aren't for welfare. They aren't for more people. Would you agree? Yeah. So I don't say it. Not very proud of it. Our poll thing shows that, that you rate high in that, which may be higher than you want to be. Okay. Let me know if you got any more. I put sure. My... Okay. along in that May Day thing was disgusting, but on yeah. the other hand, the folks are for us on that. Yeah, that's what I think, Mr. President, the average person. Yeah, Bob Holloman told me that he's had caught two or three editors, and, of course, they're all a little dumb. They don't know what the hell the Constitution writes are. Gee, they thought the president was strong, strong on riots. Well, Christ, of course I'm strong on riots, but nobody ever knew it before. That's right. I think, uh, apart from the merits of the issue, what came across to the average person on that one, that you're going to protect the integrity of the government and that you're not going to permit lawlessness to intervene. And that's all yeah. they care about. They don't worry really about the constitutional points, do they? Not in the slightest. They don't. And if it's between what you did and what the critics say, they would believe that you were uh, on the side of the Constitution. It's an interesting note that out of that thing, six questions were on that stupid issue. Yeah. Good God, the goddamn thing's over. We did the right thing. We kept the government going. These people were a bunch of dope addicts and the rest, you know, sl slashing tires, trashing uh, Georgetown and the rest. Ugh. Well, you made that point very strongly. I think that part of it, no matter what this certificate says, will turn into a very great plus with the average yeah. person. The foreign policy stuff was uh, what we expected. But it was very, very good, Mr. President. I don't think we made it even. Any I don't know whether you heard the commentators. No, I didn't. No. Well, uh, Cal says the president's reinforced the impression that foreign policy is his overwhelming strong point. Nothing but good news in foreign policy. He pointed out that where two months ago, or a month ago, uh, the first eight questions had been on Vietnam, this time the first six questions had nothing to do with Vietnam. Yeah, hold just a minute. Would you? Be, be just a couple seconds. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't buy it today. Well, I said that the first six questions were on topics other than Vietnam. That you made a very strong defense of the Vietnam system. And then above all, you were saying that a lot of Catholics and Catholic friends of Stanford were very respectful. He said it was a plus. But the content? He wasn't wildly enthusiastic. No, because he asked the question about the demonstrators. You know? That's right. But, but he didn't. He didn't nitpick it. It was 
the impression that came across was a great friend knowing exactly what she was doing. And uh, the chance, what, how did Chancellor imply that it was a plus? How did he do it? Well, he wound up by saying uh, this was another very strong performance. Uh, and what the whole of a step in his blood. I think that was good in the last word. Well, uh, the point is that, you know, this silly little jabber-jabber that we had about women's lip, wasn't that a silly question? Could you handle it beautifully? Marianne Mead. Could you handle Sarah McClendon beautifully? Yeah. I right. want to get the men home, not the goods. That's right. And it, 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 it raised goods, but, you know, with all her nitpicking about telegraph so. Yeah. But the point is that we answered, we had some very significant foreign policy news in there where I said, I did not plan a trip to Southeast Asia. I would go, however, any place. But I did say that, uh, I thought that little, uh, Buchanan gave me that little business about the Chinese proverb. Wasn't that a nice twist? That was a nice one. Kennedy had used it. Well. Yeah. Did he? Well, it's good. We used yeah, it. But again. That, that, that was all the hell. You know, the point is that the thousand. Uh, a trip of a thousand miles begins with one step. And of course, a lot of what you said on foreign policy, uh, effective as it was here, will be that with even greater significance. Well, power. I was doing it all for that audience, of course. Exactly. But you know, we covered the Chinese, and I covered the, I thought covering the UN thing, I thought was, and was the about the right line, don't you think? Ex that we were consulting, we were, were consulting. We after six weeks, but does exactly yeah. the well, I, you noticed I said, said wait, six weeks. Which is exactly what we want. Yeah, but uh, we covered that. And on Peter Lissigar's question, I thought being a little sophisticated was good just for their benefit. I forget which one was that. Well, Peter Lissigar asked the question about Saul. Oh, exactly. Do you do which? And I said, well, oh, on the that's, agreement and treaty. That, that's what you had told me. And so that I said, was well, very well done. I thought I'd tell him, well, uh, you know, I got to appear that I knew what the hell was going on. And that made him, that'll impress the hell out of him. It will impress the hell out of him and the average listener will think you're really on top of the details of this. And the intellectuals will know that you were really in charge of that one. Because what, you know, pointing out that they, on the one hand, we had a one single weapon system. On the other, we had more weapons. System, and therefore, one might be on the treaty level. The other might be on the treaty level. But I wasn't going to say. That was a good thing to point out. And another beautiful one was the one on the Middle East. <laughs> because Roland Evans called me around 7.30. And he said, well, is that treaty so bad? And I said, well, the treaty has strangely enough. I said, exactly the same thing you later said, although we had to discuss yeah. it, and it wasn't in Depends my on what they do. Exactly, and it wasn't in my recommended answer. Yeah. Uh, but was, don't you think that was the right answer to say, exactly the question right. really is not, because I didn't want to kick the Soviet at this time, not because of the media, because of other reasons, sure were at. But when I, I thought it was well to say that, well, in the event that arms were delivered, then we had to look to our whole card. But in the yeah, event that arms... Roland Evans particularly said to me he was scared to death of an arms build up, and I said, well, we'll do our best to avoid that. And then with you coming so strong, I said, no, he's going to be on the phone. How, how do you think ours will, 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 will play in the Mideast? Well, in other words, did it get across that I said, oh, the yeah. real question yes, is whether... it was very moderate. Mm -hmm. I think it was exactly the right path. And also, it will reassure the Israeli. They know they damn well we're watching it. It will be a tremendous reassurance to the Israeli. You ought to give Rabin a call and tell him that uh, the president did that because he just wanted to put the goddamn Russians on notice that they introduced weapons we would. And it also goes to us that we have got Sappy on the way. So, uh, I thought it was, it, uh, it's one that on the historical record will be one of the masterpieces of sophistication. And in terms of its effect on the public, so the strong president to do what he was doing. Can't tell. The question didn't give me much of an opportunity to be light or anything of that sort of thing. No, but the I got that, but what the hell, I don't know. I don't know whether that's what the average person wants at this point. We got through 21 questions in 28 minutes, which is bad. All of the comments, well, I only heard two commentators. I heard Calvin Sandler. Both of them spoke with great confidence. Both of them said foreign policy is clearly the strong point. Cal said, it is, of course, clear that foreign policy has had nothing but good news. Now, if one remembers what he said six weeks ago. <laughs> I really think, though, that on communist China, that looking at the historical thing, whatever else we accomplished, the Soviets 
we're going to be at a bad bet out of hit each other's throats for a long time. But if we can open to China, who knows? We could open Pandora's box or the millennium. We can't open Pandora's box because if they turn that, I'll be open to them. They'll make no, they'll not be the green. Uh, it will be one of the great epochal events. Uh, our opening to them doesn't contribute to them. I don't think we said anything that hurt your conversation. It was perfect. And from the point of view of... Uh, and the of trade the, thing, I think, saying on June 10th, I will announce it. That was good. Give them a positive. That was excellent. And again, that showed your leadership. I think it was a very, very strong press conference. We don't want, I don't believe, a great drama right now. The people aren't sure enough. And the questions were really pretty bad. But I thought much less hostile than in the previous one. Oh, no, no. no they were damned hostile on the Washington Times. On, on, on the May Day stuff. Oh, they had about five minutes of that. Yeah, on the May Day stuff. They thought they were hostile, but they were really playing for your strength. <laughs> I love to answer them. I, I just wanted to keep on the subject. I think, and also what you said about the credibility camp was extreme. So. I think it was, because looking into the camera and saying, look here, that's the easiest thing we've got, because we're going to end it. And there was one other, and then they were already beginning to get up and ask questions, and you said, that would end the credibility gap, one for credibility problem, one for all. I thought it was good to have the opportunity to answer the drug question, not in the Vietnam context, but in the broader context. I thought that was very good. Because otherwise, you just make it appear that drugs are only in Vietnam, Hell, they're all over the world. Exactly. Well, I thought it was an old well, thing. Well, we'll see how it comes out. But the main point is, every one of these is necessary. I hate their hard work. I hate to go through the eggs and produce them. But I think we've got to do them about every three weeks. What do you think? Three or four weeks. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Um, it isn't worth doing it unless it's on television. That's Not right. worth doing it. You talk to these bastards privately, or, I mean, I mean, you know, just the, where they write it, it just doesn't get across. Uh, well, Gotta be on television. On television, and another effective thing that was done last year was to go over there head to the editor. When? When we went over there head to the news briefings to the editor. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. That was another effective one. Yeah. But this, of course, is the most effective one, because that... We're talking to 50 million people. That's exactly right. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Parliament, please. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes. I just talked to Henry. He said everything came out of right for his problems. Uh, there, were, there were some, well, there were some very sophisticated answers there. But yeah. Nobody ever got the point of it. They were so subtle that only the specific understanding they were well known. But they didn't, didn't tell us. Henry always over worried, so if he is worried, he No, 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 no. What he could help that. Yeah. Good. Very good. We got it's kind of interesting in the range of these things. A couple, uh, another black gal, the head of the National Association of Negro Business Professional, had hit the drug thing again. I, I think that's going to have some effect. You may have got that across. Uh, well, you got to keep saying it, but I think we got to, got to, you know, we scored a point on it. Well, we're going to hit it after the meeting with Laird. Right. Right. But it, she made the point that she was particularly pleased on the employing and upgrading women and on the drug problem, and that Vietnam left her more optimistic on the war. Old Clarence Towns was ecstatic, thought you were getting better with each appearance. Rumsfeld, it's interesting, says, uh, says, I swear I believe there was a conspiracy among the press tonight to meet the president in a corner on the subject of the demonstration. It worries Rumsfeld, of course, but not me. He doesn't realize that's my, that's what I wanted. No, it didn't worry him, but the, you know, he's talking about that there was a conspiracy on it. Oh, there was. Well, there was. It, except, as Ron points out, which is kind of interesting, that the questioners were Rather and Deacon, who would be against us, and the other two were uh, uh, Boyd, and uh, to Horst, yeah, who would be with us? I know they're all worried about that. So they're, you know, 
They aren't. That is. But it helps for aren't the group that would. But on the other hand, it helps their credibility. So oh sure. You know, one thing we ought to get across, Bob, is the number of questions. Twenty-one and twenty-eight. Hell of a lot of questions. Darn right. Rami says you really look good, look natural and at ease. Thought the China answer was excellent. He uh, liked a little business about North He can it. Can you know? That's an old, old Kennedy juice too. But it's a marvelous proverb. The front, yeah, one step a thousand. Well, a, a journey of a thousand miles begins with one, one step. step. Yeah, it is good. He, uh, Rummy made the point, and uh, that's comment somewhere else that, that we that Ron ought to be briefed on the legality question that we we that we didn't get through clearly, mm -hmm. and that there is a hang up there. Why people were arrested, and not held, because he's afraid that the impression comes through that they weren't held because they were in fact not guilty, which of course isn't the case. Well, I'll get Mitchell to get some. so Bob. Let's, let's say it doesn't make that much difference. Let me tell you what happened. We arrest a hell of a lot of people in a strictly legal sense. It was not legal. That's right. But we had to do it. Now that's all there is to it, and we'll do it again. And that because keeping this government going is more important than screwing around. Because, because nobody was thrown in the can, and nobody's kept in the can. They're all released. So what are they squealing about? Yeah. And uh, don't don't uh, don't worry about this little technical legal question. Right. If somebody were in jail, that's different. But nobody's in jail. Right. Now, Laird uh, says this may have been the best one you've done yet, certainly one of the best. He was surprised there was so little emphasis on Vietnam and so much on the May Day demonstrations. But he liked it. Yeah, very much. Jim Haggerty said uh, he particularly liked the, was particularly impressed with the, quest, the questions on the police, dis the answers on the police disorders. The, his next point was the answer to the question on China, and he was amazed it was number 18. And his third thing he was impressed with was Vietnam in terms of the logic and in terms of the quick answer to Sarah McClendon, which he like. You know, but, but it wasn't the goods, but the... Uh, yeah, but the people. The men. The people I care about. That gave you a great chance to twist that one. Don't you think that was pretty good? I sure do. Because you, know, you could have gotten into a big, long I want to get the men home. I don't want to. Stupid, stupid stuff home. about shipping telephone poles home and who the hell cares. Haggerty says, I was impressed personally with the crispness of the answers and ability to handle things on a comprehensive basis, again, ranging from the ILO to law and order. The Klosky answer was both brilliant and unusual. Oh, the political. <laughs> well, of course, I had planned that long ago, and I said, President of Press Conference is not a proper forum to comment on political matters, and I wasn't going to comment on it. You liked us. Klein makes the point. He says, I think you'll find the reporters congratulating themselves on the follow-up, and if so, he intends to follow up by pointing out they always had the same opportunity. No, we don't plan It's up to them to do it, yeah. Red Blunt says, I thought the reporters performed poorly. They are usually bad, but this time they were worse. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Red. <laughs> Raj, Raj Morton. Says, I wish the press would cover a broader spectrum. The president does so well, it's a damn shame the American public can't hear what he has to say about revenue sharing and some of the other issues. <laughs> huh? You ever noticed a question you said earlier on Never. revenue sharing? Never. On the environment, on reorganization, we haven't had one. Which indicates to me that, we, well, yeah. Look at some of these from public officials around the country. The county commissioner in Mecklenburg County in North Carolina says, he agreed with your statement on marijuana was his first first point. Got into the China thing. He's not very keen on that, but he isn't very informed, so he'll support the president. He agrees with the president on the discussion of the May Day issues, and uh, he agreed on civil rights. He said it's a very big issue in his area, and, and he doesn't blame the president, but people are unhappy because of the Justice Department. No, that kind of thing. Well, I, I, thought, there, which, I thought taking on uh, Hesper on Darn right. Question. With, that's why he said he was pleased. You know, I'm sure on the civil rights. I, mean, I don't question their sincerity. They shouldn't question ours. Don't you agree? There's the county supervisor, St. Louis, thought the president was magnificent, more warmth, more color, and better delivery than any of his other press conferences. Command Who is it? Which is nice. St. Louis. Lawrence Roos. Oh, Larry Roos. He's liberal. Yeah. Is he? Mm -hmm. Good man. Good I didn't know you know. Ran for governor. He thought the command of the subject was practically flawless. He prefers the president using the podium as he did tonight. You know, that podium is a hell of a help. I'll bet it is. Well, I can lean on it. Yeah. I, can, I can 
wipe my face when I walk out. Yeah. Says he felt the president avoided the tendency he sometimes has to smile and freeze. He felt he was much more relaxed and his smile came across much more naturally. Than it does hmm. and Wasn't then, much of a chance to smile tonight. No. Mayor Dyke of Madison, Wisconsin says uh, he's a television so he's a The president made a good appearance, seemed at all times in command. Length of replies was good. However, he suggests that he preface some of the responses with the idea that he'd like to give some background to his response. He thought the responses to the May Day questions were particularly good. Mm. He thought the press's question regarding Vietnam indicated they didn't give a damn about Vietnam or his answers. He suggested that some future response indicate we don't want another Vietnam in the Middle East. He suggested that the president looking directly into the camera and talking over the reporters to the television audience did not come across well. Yeah. He, does, he doesn't like that. He does like that. I think most people do. And Bill Connors, County Executive of Delaware, says he was impressed with the point on the morality of our involvement in Vietnam. The POW question was good. Encouraged by the discussion of efforts to normalize relations with China. On the POW, pointing out the fact that Johnson stopped the bomb. He just he stopped the bomb. Yeah. Got. The wires don't have any clear-cut lead out of it. They're leading a uh, whole series of leads. Right. UPI uh, first lead is President Nixon declared Tuesday night he would go anywhere in the world if he thought it would lead to an agreement on nuclear arms limitations or a mutual troop reduction in Europe. And uh, he said he'd been that Laird and Rogers have been consulting about the Soviet offer to negotiate on mutual reductions. So, so they got that. That was good for Laird and Rogers to point out the favor in the act. Yep. Yep. Sure is. Then the uh, second lead was President Nixon said Tuesday night he could not agree with the report of the Civil Rights Commission, which accused his administration of retreating for earlier strong effects. And uh, so that he felt it necessary to respectfully disagree with the unfair charge another the finding commission declaration the nation is not yet morally committed. I do not think they should question the sir. Got that quote. Then their third lead is President Nixon Tuesday night ruled out any agreement with North Vietnam for release of U.S. prisoners without assurances that action and not just discussion would follow. That's pretty good. Yeah, I think so. The president hinted at a major change in the longstanding U.S. opposition to communist China's admission to the United Nations. Also announced U.S. would move forward with, toward negotiating the Soviet Union. That's that's the stuff they're leading. With. Yeah. Wasn't much really. yeah. There wasn't one clear-cut single lead. There's a number of a U or AP moved an urgent saying the president said a significant change has taken place among UN members on proposals to address China, and he said the U.S. in about six weeks will announce the position. It will take. That gave Henry back to the U.S. Six weeks. We don't want to announce it. Right. Got that. The uh, business about whether you're looking at cameras Interesting. Pat and the girls both thought that I should do it more. I'm inclined to think they're right. You know, they said, that's what the people like. I want to look at it again because I, I try to make notes as I go so I don't get a feel of it. I want to run it again and get a feel of it. You're like. looking at the dot and the die in your basement. Angle shot. You're looking at the camera. Talking, giving an answer like that, it seems to me you, you really should look right into the camera. Because you're talking to the people and not to the reporter. If you're doing some silly thing like Sarah McClendon's telephone poll, it'd be, 
and I toss it away to her. Or like the political answer. Because there you're really talking to the press. Dyke may be thinking of the press more than the people. Yeah. Yeah. But you can take a look at that. Because I can use that device more. Which gives me a better shot. Yes, generally. Yeah, I do. I think, I think it does. There, what Dyke may be getting to, too, though, is you miss, if you do that, you miss a little bit of the flavor of being present at an event. It becomes more like a presidential speech or something where you're just talking to the folks, where this way you're, you're yeah. bouncing the ball back and forth in the court there. It's the first. Others watched it. I sure think, though, that yeah, what do you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think you ought to always have it there. The next thing we ought to look at, and you ought to think about a little bit, is whether that podium is, is, is exactly the way you want it because you know whether it ought to be a little higher, a little wider, or anything, you know, any, we might as well get it just precisely right. Why don't you all look that over? Uh, it's really what's what's the most comfortable for you. Well, also what looks best for folks. Yep, yep. Well, I've wondered, for instance, if it's black all the way around there, whether that really looks the best, or whether it would look better if it was a wood finish or blue or something else. I don't know. Well, you know, I get back to the fact that I'm glad they asked all those questions. You well, know, I know the folks are on our side. You've got a chance to, well, we know our problem in that damn poll. Right. Get the law and order position and the dope position over. Boy, you got a chance to swing the boat up. We hit the dope position. Darn good. Yep. Four-point program. Information. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Of course. Sir. Yeah, supply. Supply, addicts, push, punish the pushers. Information. Message. I think coming out strongly on the, the uh, being against the marijuana thing has only been done, has not been done. On the, well, we just did that at San Clemente. That's right. This, this bike is a national talk. I mean, awfully good. A chance. Like, it's moral or social ground. Uh, like Isn't something, though, old Raj is right. Ask anything about revenue sharing, <laughs> parks, environment. Oh, God, nothing about those things. I don't. I don't. It's amazing. It really is. <laughs> Anybody else? No, that's. It's probably just. That's all. The real question is how often you should do this. It's a hell of a workout, but uh, I'm inclined to think that uh, once every three I think your three week thing is a good pattern. I think so you don't get too much. Not generally, no. Maybe at a point where it becomes too much or something. Yeah. And it kind of depends on other things too, but yeah, it should be. Connolly, please.
Hello? Pleasure. How are you feeling? Well, I'm, I'm not sure I feel a whole lot better, but I feel better after watching you tonight, although you did exceptionally well. Well, you know, I was just saying to Bob Haldeman, he just told me about your car. But uh, isn't it interesting that in that whole goddamn press conference, not one question on revenue sharing, not one on the environment, not one on parks, not one on government on reorganization, the economy, really. on the economy. No, no, they didn't really ask about that. But these guys, uh, I'm glad they badgered me on the Washington police because boy that's that's our issue <laughs> it really is and i thought you handled it exceptionally well i think there's there was one uh one particular thing i noticed tonight and that was i thought you were more relaxed i noticed you're using the podium which might account for some of it but you were you were much more uh or appeared to be much more relaxed in your facial expression which i thought was extremely good uh, there was a time or two when when you, or at least I read into your facial expression, disgust almost at some of the questions. But most of the time, well, you, you were you were smiling, you were relaxed, uh, and 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 I don't think the disgust that I read into it was was bad. I think it was good. Uh, sometimes you've got to be a little disgusted. Well, no question about it. And I think uh, the, the, the one of the principal advantages of these uh, press conferences like this, the average person has to see how antagonistic this press is. Isn't it something else? It really is unbelievable. I think the only question that I would rate as not being antagonistic was the fellow who asked you, uh, and I, I don't know whether it's Bill Tice or not, but who asked you about China yeah, and that, the trade policy with respect to China. That, right. item. that was just a straight question, which was legitimate. Which was a legitimate, fair, yeah. decent question. Also, I think the question that Lissagor asked with regard to whether or not that we were going to have a treaty yes. or not, yes. that was a legitimate yes. question. And then Label Label need to to give a legitimate answer, but uh, for the the most part, these guys really aren't interested in the facts, they're only interested in badgering. That's right. That's not too bad either. But I thought you came out exceptionally well, and uh, and I must say that I think uh, the more often you do it, the more biased uh, you show them to be to the American people, because the American people, I'm convinced, have an antenna for for this sort of thing. They're not fools. They they hope they're not. I thought, uh, again, the, uh, the fact that they didn't ask you uh, anything uh, about this whole economic picture uh, mm. uh, was, was the most incredible part of all. Yeah, I was prepared. My God, I spent, uh, I was prepared to answer a dozen questions on that, you know, about the everything from balance of payment. Right. To, uh, I was going to say, incidentally, that we, my, uh, that, that the Secretary of Treasury had stated our position articulately on uh, and uh, that I completely supported it, that uh, we were we were of course concerned about maintaining uh, the international monetary situation, but we would not make decisions with regard to the international monetary situation that would be detrimental to our domestic economy, which is basically our view. Uh, we damn well are not going to do it. You know, it's all the more incredible when you realize that today, uh, through Ron Baker, you put out a long statement on the aluminum company, labor, labor settlement. Not a question on that. No, or nothing on steel. Or steel. That's right. I was prepared to answer those. I was sure you were. You would have anticipated that they would have yeah. been on the yeah. But I don't know. I don't yeah. off exceedingly well. And, uh, well, and we'll, uh, tomorrow you're going up before Wilbur. Yes, sir. The Battle of the Giants. Let me let me tell you what I was going to answer on that. I was going to do it with a very low-key and uh, deft way. I thought I was going to say, well, it's quite clear that Chairman Mills has a majority of the committee, and that uh, Secretary Connolly has a majority of the country. And I believe that in the final analysis that uh, the chairman will uh, not deny to the Congress the opportunity to vote uh, on this question of whether we should have revenue sharing. That's really what's involved. I don't know. Well, I think it would have been a good answer. Uh, <laughs> if we'd ever got the question. Yeah. But he, uh, uh, he just got more and more belligerent out there with the negotiation of the door. It's both down to six. I assume that, but I wouldn't uh, be too sure. When you go up, I uh, oh, I feel you can say, look, uh, we believe this very strongly, and we just believe the Congress ought to have a chance to vote on it. I think that line is very effective, and that, that uh, look, if he has a better plan, he'd like to know what it is. Uh, no, yeah. he doesn't have it. No, 
know, I know it. And I'm amazed that you've gone this far out on a limb without having a better plan. Because nearly everywhere, or without having a plan, nearly everywhere he's been, uh, you know, he's promised that he's going to come up with something. Yeah. Yeah. Did you go to Camp David or not? No, sir, I didn't. Well, no, I, I wanted you and uh, well, you were very your wife to go up there because it was I lovely was up there and you could have had a time by yourself. Yeah, I suppose you had a schedule today. Yeah, yeah sir, I was at the office all, uh, all right. morning until the middle of the afternoon. I'm going to keep on work out here. On well, here, so well, I just thought it would be more trouble than work to go up there. That's good, Kyle. Uh, uh, but I appreciate your thoughtfulness very much. Uh, you get down, get a little rest now. And you, uh, you and uh, Weber, you know, you and Weber are beyond. You're going to be on TV tomorrow night, I can assure you. This uh, is, I'm sure that's right. We'll have, as I said, this is the Battle of the Giants. We'll have a, uh, and, I'd be, and I think you ought to be very understanding. We, we appreciate honest men disagreeing in this thing, but we have strong convictions that this matter ought to be uh, submitted to the Congress. Uh, Don't you really think that's yes, the thing? Yes, I think yeah. that's that's all. And that if he, we, we're, uh, uh, if he has, uh, we're, we're not frozen in cement as to what it ought to be. We, but uh, what do you want to do, Mr. Chairman? You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. All right, sir. Well, get a little rest. Thank Bye. you. Ms. Woods, please. You, uh, your little friends were really tr trying to get after us, weren't they? Well, you know, and they're, and they're also dark on stupid. they got to read their questions. Yeah. And they were nasty. Yeah, well. Well, they weren't, they were just, they were really rough questions, and they really just, stayed with it. But, boy, you just answered beautifully. The expression was great. It was just marvelous. It was, it was, and, and Well, I wasn't rough on them, but I was damn. I thought it was very important. Well, tell, you tell were, the American people that we weren't going to tolerate these demonstrators. You know, that's right. What was beautiful was that you were not rough on them. You answered. You were you were just great. It was it was very good, and you uh, didn't they didn't annoy you. You didn't let it show if they did, and it was just it really was excellent. Well, they were. Uh, I thought it was good to get across that uh, that credibility question. Oh, that was marvelous. <laughs> Look, we're going to, after all, we're, it's an easy one because we're going we're gonna to answer that with what we do. I think that got it. I think that was just great. And when you smiled and said you wished all your problems, you know, were that easy, it was just, I, I thought it was just absolutely perfect. But you know, I, I was, uh, somebody was saying, like, gee, they really were asked so many questions about the demonstrators. And I said, gee, I, I was glad they did because. The folks are for us on that issue. Well, that's right. And you very patiently each time said that they were not demonstrators, that peaceful demonstrators just had no trouble here. These were not peaceful demonstrators. You, it was just great. You said it just right, and you never, you know, you didn't lash out. It was just marvelous. I suppose they told you John Mitchell called and said. No, I didn't hear that. Oh, he called uh, for you or for me, and he said that... Uh, uh, he thought it was absolutely great because the job was just very, very deaf. That he was sorry that the Justice Department gave you so many problems. <laughs> <laughs> he thought you handled all the questions just right, and he he was very pleased. He thought it would make a very interesting study to have somebody analyze the questions and the way they were worded. All these people are just more concerned about the rights. Well, that's the right. That want, to, want to not have their tires slashed or their garbage thrown all over the place. Yeah, the ones who want to go to work and, and be a good citizen. Nobody cares about their rights. So I thought it was just, it was great. And they were sort of stupid to keep pounding that question because it really gave you a great chance. That was... Oh, my, yes. And they're, you know, some of them, when they ask questions, they just look so evil. Don't say that. Yeah. Oh. Straight out evil. But it, it's really fantastic, but it was a great job. Okay. Okay. Take care. Yes, Edgar Hoover. Thank you, Mr. Yes, sir. Mr. Mitchell, please. Thank you. And this person, I have uh, Mr. J. Edgar Hoover. Oh, fine. I'll take it. Hello? Hello? Edgar, I hope you noticed I backed up our people here tonight. 
You know, weren't, what do you think of that press corps? Isn't that a bunch of bastards? Yeah. But I was, frankly, I was glad they kept hitting that question because, frankly, I think the folks are on our side. They don't give a, I mean, this business about picking up these people, arresting these people. What the hell are you going to do? Let them, let them, huh? Right. We have to do that. You notice, too, I took a strong line, line on marijuana. I said, can't legalize it. Because, you know, we've got these we've got these people at the National Institute of Me That's right. It's a national problem, not just a problem. Well, I'd like to have, uh, I was tempted sometimes to kick him a little harder, but I thought it was well to be a little restrained. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's what I felt. They knew what I meant. They just wanted, they just thought that they had us on a hook with regard to arresting people. And by golly, what else are you going to do? Just let them uh, tear the city up? It sure was. The judges are terrible here. We know that. Yeah. 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 One of the reasons the lower courts will not act is they know they'll be reversed by Bazelon. Good. 
already have the impact. Good. Yeah, if I could make it, that'd be great. Good. Well, if you can, that'd be great, Edgar. Good. Okay. We'll, we'll see you Thursday, then. Thursday morning. Bye. <clears throat> Hello? Yeah. Hello? <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, I think that it was good that they tried to keep that subject up because uh, we're on the side of the angels there. Well, you know, really, uh, this certainly exposes the press for what they are, though. Those bastards, they don't care about keeping the government going. They don't care about the, you know, slashing the tires or trashing uh, all over the city or stopping the traffic. The bastards only care about the, what are we going to do about these poor, innocent little bastards that are down here to demonstrate against the war. I was glad to get across the point of uh, not legalizing uh, marijuana. I'd said it earlier uh, in California, but by gosh, it's time for the country to know that we're not going to crap around with these people. Well, Mr. President, the, the, uh, every bit of evidence comes along in the current detail, but every bit of evidence comes along. It's very hard to think of this uh, hard narcotic addict to come from the American organization. <laughs> Well, as a matter of fact, you could say it's kind of like cigarettes and cancer. You cannot prove that cigarettes lead to cancer, but all the evidence shows that those who smoke cigarettes are more likely to get cancer than those that don't. Well, and so it is with this damn thing. I think it's closer to this. I really do, because that's the dependence of the results of Yeah. Sure, sure. Well, of course, uh, marijuana is an escapist thing, so they escape into the bigger escape. Well, anyway, we'll uh, we'll have a little meeting, a good meeting on Thursday, I hope. Well, okay. uh, the one of the fascinating things in the street, I guess, is that true. They have the chancellor, and I think the city of my daughter is almost complimentary. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this surprised the hell out of me. Yeah. Because uh, now it's Uh, that's right. That's fine. Well, with the, 
They just sort of they make a plus for us. Yeah, when you got off the house. <laughs> yeah, we took, we said we we're going to make a statement <laughs> later. Okay. That's the way to go. Bye, bye. Good show. Yeah. Mr. Ehrlichman, yeah. sir. Hello? Yeah. Yes, sir. Do you have anything you want to go over before 3.30? Uh, no. All right. No, I'm over in Maury Stan's office. Fine. And uh, Fine. Uh, I don't have anything today. All right. Well, we got the... We, get, we certainly got a lot of law enforcement out today. Sure did. <laughs> Can't be much confusion <laughs> today. Really, really drove the press up the wall there. It's a goddamn mat. That's what I hear. Biting their nails. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Twitching their tail. Okay. Right. that on, uh, after our talk with Doral and Mitchell, it probably we ought to start our one-man responsibility thing here on the big like on the voters. And, uh, you know, we got Finch, you know, flubbing around, Mitchell, you know, sort of talking about it, so, right? But nobody's really doing anything. Nobody's really responsible. We sort of need to, I don't know, the bargain operation. Is it, do you think maybe that this is something that somebody should take and get quite excited about and do the job? Yeah, or I really? It, no, I really do. I really think it. I think it's a tremendous possibility. I mean, we got young people, you know, that want to do things. We got junior chamber guys that would love to do it. We got women that want to work. What the Christ are they doing? I mean, you know what I mean? What more could they do that is more important than this? I really feel that. I think that really gets down though, Bob, to the whole business of responsibility. But I don't think we really got it now. What do you think? I think that's right. National Committee floats around, everybody else talks about it. Bob never will. Bob, she never will. He never gets down to it. Uh, well, we'll talk about it. I, think, I, think I just right thought there. you ought to consider it. That this is a, I'd kind of like to get some of that where we get you a young goer. Put him in charge. Like we're putting Krogh in charge of drugs. Well, I couldn't feel better about drugs because I know Krogh is a tough son of a bitch. He believes as I believe. He's going to do what I want. Right? And he will. He won't and we're. Up. And, and he won't give up, and he'll needle everybody, and we're going to do something. And Bob, that's what we need in every field. I I think that's you know that's that uh, that's what that, that crazy Perot says, but he's right. Yep. That's a very good point. And that's where we don't get things done, it's where we don't have that. Right. Any doubt about it. You know, on uh, another subject, one thing that was really rather pleasing about this thing tonight. I never saw a more appreciative group. You know, these people have come from all over the country. A lot of them have been defeated. And my God, they were just Democrats and Republicans, so appreciative and so forth. And also the members of Congress. It, it, I think maybe we ought to build a little more because, you know. I'm sure that meant an awful uh, lot to them. It's kind of and, like your wittier class. Yeah. And, 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 and another thing, I think we might do a little bit of that with the members of Congress on a social basis. You know, just bring them down for a cocktail and come down and shoot them. We find a reason. It's an awfully, you know, it's a. You get the personal touch to it. You get personal loyalty that you never get out of that sort of impersonal business of bringing them down to the cabinet. They were really great. These people were just, just uh, so moved by our surprise. We forget the power of the White House. Uh, well, we tend to. We sure, you know, we got to play it in 
play it with people that it does mean something to, and that's that kind right. of group it really would. Rather than having John Gardner for the 18th time, yeah. have people like this, and have others, you know, you know, uh, like uh, that's one of the reasons this police chiefs was good. Right. They'd never been in the cabin room before. Right. But they feel for them. And they thought it was marvelous. They said, no president ever did this before, and they're right. That's what we ought to do, is more and more of that kind of thing, and less and less of the... Less and less of the people that that have always been there, like the Advertising Council, yeah. the Council on Foreign Relations, the, you know, the, uh, the usual groups that come to town that expect always to see me, the Foreign Intelligence Advisory Board, I'll see them. doesn't mean a goddamn thing to them, Bob. Not a thing, really. They've been there. Don't you agree? Yeah. So I have a fun I, uh, I thought Dole would seem to be a little uh, concerned about the poll business and so forth. We've got to keep his dobber up. You know. I don't think I, he's always concerned about the POW thing. That's, yeah, I know. He has about four that I understand. he deals with all the time. And they, they get yeah. No on approval. It's uh, even in Gallup, still 50, isn't it? Yep. That isn't too bad. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. The real drag is the war. We've got to face it. That's it. I don't know if that's your case. Well, I feel it. <laughs> you read it through everything. Oh. The other thing that was interesting. But that's good. That shows. There's other latent strength that's, that's holding up, and if you eliminate that one negative, the latent strength in the other area should, should pop up. Should one thing that is very interesting about this group tonight, two things I mentioned briefly. Uh, both Democrats and Republicans have spoke very, very favorably of the press. You know, of course, these are pros. They've seen it. But boy, they were. Right 
problem with a Q&A with a panel of that kind <clears throat> is that they say it's a fix. Well, or either they say it's a fix on the one side or that uh, and also you get the kids on it tend to try and uh, get real gussy up questions, grandstand themselves. What we, we might do is to sometime go to some young group and just say, all right, questions, kids, and let them pop up. Yeah. And, uh, Rochester, I've considered the possibility of just making an immediate human, which might be a different way to handle that. That's right. And, uh, let the cameras be in and all that. Huh. That's kind of interesting. How are they going to handle this uh, on a fund? I don't want to uh, have our people try to gloss it over. They're just going to, uh, I don't know, they were they were debating whether to try and uh, make a little, explain it or, uh, yeah, explanation and make our point. And I think we've got to do that. I think we have yes. We've got to do it in order not for people to get too depressed. Well, for them not to get depressed, also so that we don't look like we only explain the good news and ignore the bad. That's right. And I think if we just take it, it's good for our people to say, you know, well, yeah, we can do that. Quite aware of it. This is what the president has said that unemployment. Point out the president has said that the unemployment is the major factor, and we're going to we're working on it. That employment is going up. We've got to have it go up more because of the increasing. Point out the favorable thing: more people employed, but that we need more to sop up the people that are being let out of the armed forces. What we're talking about more. Get that across. I say I it's going to move. I just assume heaven. It, it, let it go even to six two, six three, six four, whatever it is. Can do that and, and then, 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 every month that goes down is a hell of a good enough month, huh? Right. It's got to get up a ways, and it's got to be up a ways in order to go down. Think about this, young okay. you find a good forum. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's happening in the East. <laughs> Might be something. But not necessarily college kids. But I don't think you want to. Maybe one. It's a range of types. I mean, let's, let's work we don't want the kids to look bad. Right. See, if you have just each color kid, they'll look bad and antagonistic. But on the other hand, you have a, a combination. A little because we, uh, we, uh, from this group tonight, it's quite apparent the Q and A. The Q and A technique is extremely effective. They often, you know, these other black first year pros and watch them use. I do them better than anybody else does. You just got to broker that thing. You know, well, that's the same thing that our friends from Yale right? Right. Most every ten months, and in its various forms, and we ought to work for other ones. We shouldn't just just, you don't Be have to limit a Q&A to the press. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go before almost any group. I could have even done that with the Chamber of Commerce. Sure. That's a nice question. Sure. Yeah. Like we did, like like them, you know, let the Chamber of Commerce have a panel. Do it like the editors. Yeah. Right? yeah. And uh, they'd ask a lot of good questions. Uh, have you checked them? If you didn't have any report on the drivers in the yet? No. Uh, one other thing I want to mention briefly. We do not, do we have a dinner in the White House next week? We really shouldn't have mentioned it. 
they're going to start decorating. I don't think we do. do she said on the 8th, she thought we had a dinner. I said, I don't think so. 8th? Do we have that? We have one of those more stands? My view is that if we do, we've got to put it in Blair House or, or something. You see what I mean? I don't want to. Yeah, I don't have my calendar right here. It's in the other room, but I. Uh, want me to check it? Would you mind? Just a second. We don't have anything on the eighth at all. Yeah, we have anything next week. No. Okay. No. Because remember, we checked that she didn't want anything after the. Yeah. Uh, so next week is clear, is it not? For uh, as far as White House. Yeah. yeah. The seventh was the date they had proposed for the advertising council reception. So we have that scratched anyway. Uh. <clears throat> On the eighth is uh, Pete Peterson's bipartisan leaders thing, but that doesn't involve uh, no, that's not a social deal. That's uh, you know, the Peterson International presentation, an economic presentation, briefly. So what that one? And the tenth is the Divine Group. That's not social. Push that over to the Blair House. Yeah, but it is a social thing anyway. Right. That's good. Well, I'm a Peterson. I think we can push that to Blair House very easily. Sure. Well, we can, we'll work out a, if, if it's scheduled to be in the residence and that poses any problem, we can sure not have it there. I don't think it is. Well, we wanted to have something social. We could have the thing at the warehouse. Sure. And uh, put the whole deal on over there. Yeah. And, uh, let's leave the White House staff because they've got a hell of a bird. Actually, the warehouse isn't big enough to do a big group for, uh, in one room for a briefing or anything. And I, that's all it is. Yeah. But we, I know we were, from our side, we're not planning on doing anything in the, in the residence next to the because it's a different thing. The eighth, you know, was when we were going to be at Midway. Okay, well, we'll have to look at that in the morning. Schedule very clear from the White House. Yeah, right. We sure will. Good. Okay, Bob. Okay. okay. So. Mr. President, Tricia. Yeah.
Yes, please. Senator Pastore, please. Yes, Mr. President. Hello? Mr. President, Senator Pastore is at the airport now, coming in from Rhode Island. He'll be in his office in 15 minutes. I'll have him call you. Fine. You get Co Congressman Hosmer, please. Hosmer, right, sir. Craig Hosmer. Thank you. Yeah. Congressman Craig Hosmer, sir. Ready? Hello, Mr. President. Since you missed our meeting uh, when we had on uh, Breeder Reactor, you know, I wanted you to know that we sent the message today, Craig, but that I just told Ziegler that I told Ziegler to tell the press that uh, it was a bipartisan effort that you and uh, Hollifield and so forth had been, had been bugging me about it. <laughs> the one thing I wanted to tell you too is that I uh, uh, Hollifield was there last night for the Eighth Club thing, and I've and I've told the people around here now this has got to be something we play very close to the vest. But I am being ruthless on one thing. I, any any activities that we possibly can should be placed in Southern California in this field and also in the saline water field. Good. Uh, you know, we need the jobs. Uh, we need to sop up those air plant workers. Now, we've got some, we're going to do a couple of new things on water, for example, and I, I've decided to throw uh, one big plant in the Southern California. I mean, you know, a, a big, uh, one of these implementing, uh, you know what I mean, it's right. just a question of how big the plant is. Uh, and this will be a, this will be one that uh, goes there and, and uh, but in this energy field, I told uh, Dr. David and, and uh, of course Seaborg and the rest that we do it. So on the committee, every time you have a chance, needle them. Say where's this going to be? Let's push the California. Right, will you do that? Answer, Danny, Mr. President. Yeah. I am so delighted you released that 16 million dollars on the uh, <laughs> improvement of the uh, enriching complex. Good. Uh, that yeah. handles a bad uh, blood right. problem for right. you. Good. Good. Just unplug some. Well, blood. they told me you were interested in it. I said, well, if Hosmer's for it, I'm for it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, good, but uh, I I didn't want you to know. Uh, fee, uh, I wanted you to know that I was aware of your interest. And that, oh yes, yes. But you you were out in California at the time of the meeting. You see, Chad has worked very closely with me. And well, he told me. As a matter of fact, he told me on the plane going out. He says, "Look, Hosmer's and I have just been like uh, and I, uh, together." His statement uh, that he's given. We've got special orders this afternoon. Uh, good. And uh, he does nothing but uh, compliment you for mm -hmm. 17 pages. Well, when you if you talk, would you you might say that I called and expressed pre and pointed out that this was a bite partisan initiative and that that's uh, so. that the problem was by the part that there are two things the problem of more energy is by our partisan and the problem of of, of clean environment uh, a clean source of energy is bipartisan and this is something that we're going to work together on and all that okay fine and dandy sir. all right thank you very much mr president, well, if they want. Mr. president is senator pastore return your call do you want to take it now yeah fine you are. Hello. Hello. I just wanted you to know, John, that I uh, just sent to the Congress today the energy message, and I told my press secretary, Ron Ziegler, to point out that this is a bipartisan effort that you and Chet Hollyfield uh, joined with Hosmer and others, and that it, without uh, your help, we wouldn't have come this far. Well, you're so kind, and I'm well, going to go on the floor yeah. at 12 o'clock after your news release uh, deadline and uh, make a statement to that. Effect. Well, I appreciate it. Well, you, I think it, it's a wonderful. When, when you go on, if you could, I, you, I would appreciate if you like, you mentioned the fact that you and I. I have talked and that I emphasize that I consider this a bipartisan effort and that yes. uh, we, we this is one that we should uh, that goes far beyond any other considerations and that you fellows played a major part in getting it through. I, I shall do exactly that. I privilege to do it. And Good. Thank you very, very much for calling. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, please. Attorney General, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah. The Attorney General, Mr. President. Hello. The President. Hello. Yes, Mr. President.
Well, uh, uh, on our uh, operation yesterday, I was very pleased with it. I mean, I was, you know, they, the fact they had this flap over Murphy just made it a hell of a lot bigger story than it otherwise would have been. I think that's absolutely true. And, of course, the uh, stories are now coming over the wire today where the chiefs of police are defending the in fact, there wasn't any necessity to have uh, Murphy or uh, this other character, Tam, there. Yeah, so they're still sticking up to that. We couldn't have everybody, and, uh, you know, it's a, the room only holds so many. In any event, I think the, the, the controlling factor was that Murphy had com had uh, criticized uh, uh, the chief here. The hell with him. I mean, we're not going to I'm not going to have him in the room because we had the unanimous opinion on that. And otherwise, with Murphy there, we'd have had a Sarah uh, ball. Well, in addition, that had been an insult to Jerry Wilson to bring him down here. That's right. That's right. And what it was well, done in the city. Well, he isn't considered, uh, John, is he to be a great chief up oh, in New York? No, no place. Good heavens. No up. place. He's so, just a lib politician. That's all he has. That's right. And one of a, one of a Lindsay's. Of course, isn't it, uh, what do you think of this uh, running battle between Rocky and Lindsay? Is that just going to go on, or, or, is that, or is that just part of the part of the scenario? Up no, there? It's, it's going to go on. And uh, uh, as soon as that legislature's out of there, I understand that uh, Nelson is uh, interested in uh, taking some definitive steps, such as uh, taking over some of the functions possibly, or mm -hmm. possibly putting a commission like the old Seabury investigation in there to see what he's doing wrong. And uh, I think he's going to stay with it because mm -hmm. it's going to make him a lot more credible. Yeah. Uh, Rockbell has been refusing to uh, meet uh, Lindsay's state aid request for the uh, uh, reason that Lindsay is not properly administering the city and expending his monies properly. Mm -hmm. So in order to make that credible after he gets through with the legislature, I think he'll take further steps along some lines to prove this to be true. It's good. Good. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, from all accounts, and of course I guess Ryland is a fellow that colors my comments, but I think Lindsay's just been a lousy mayor. Oh, he's terrible. Uh, he's a demagogue and a poor administrator. and a, What he has uh, done, Mr. President, has caused him so much uh, trouble. He's gone into this uh, liberal community. There's not a single a uh, city employee that's working for him that's worth a damn. All the good ones have up and gone. Yeah. And he's got in all these do-gooders that are mm -hmm. trying to run budgets and administer departments, and it just isn't working. The good employees have left. Are the good oh, yeah. tough? Yeah. yeah, they've all gone. And he had some good ones at the beginning. I helped him get some of them. But they've all packed out here a couple of years ago. And well, what does he have then? Just sort of a bunch of uh, well intellectuals, so-called, or what? Yeah, it was like uh, his top man of this Aurelio is a as a uh, liberal Democrat who is one of the oh boy. complete do-gooders, and that's mm -hmm. been siphoned on down all through his uh, administrative organization and his advisory commissions and so forth. And they just don't have anybody there that knows right. anything about uh, municipal government or how to manage it or has even a desire to do the right things. In other words, I'll take care of this welfare element and uh, the liberal establishment, the hell with the city's finances and uh, how you administer a city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Well, we'll... Uh And John Lindsay's going to make a commencement address in New Hampshire this week. Oh, Lindsay is? Yeah. That's He's nice. He's got three speeches, I understand. He's uh, having quite a bit of difficulty to decide which one he's going to use. <laughs> you know, up, you mean in New Hampshire? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably kill, uh, kick us on the war. Uh, undoubtedly that, but I got, he's got one of them that's real hard and then a middle of the rotor and a lighter one, and it may yeah. give some indication as to what uh, he's got yeah. in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, he hasn't got very many places to go, but his people are still toying with it and looking around. Mm -hmm.
Yes, please. Mr. Colson, please. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Well, how are you cutting, getting along? Well, I think we're uh, we're having a good week. Uh, a lot of fun with your friends. I had the most refreshing experience, Mr. President, I've had in a long time this week with the uh, the group of Vietnam veterans who have organized for us. Uh, it's a great job. Oh, well, they they came in to see me after their yeah. after their press conference, which, uh, by the way, got remarkable coverage. Yeah, all of them. I saw. It. And uh, this boy O'Neill, who's uh, God, you'd just be proud of. And there were ten of them. One of them, by the way, had been arrested for tearing down a Viet Cong flag a year ago. <laughs> they're, Great. They're just marvelous kids, and 100 uh, percent behind you. They talked about the drug problem in Vietnam. They said, "Don't." He, they said, "It's a it's a problem, but no worse than in the high schools." And uh, that's what I think. They're going out. They, in fact, the, the Marines in the outfit uh, in that group said it was much less in Vietnam. He said that this is all another one of the press exaggerations. These fellows are going out speaking in various parts of the country for us. Uh, yeah. They were invited on Face the Nation this week but for a debate with Kerry, but Kerry turned them down, refused to debate, refused to debate O'Neill. Aha, uh -huh. which is a point we'll get out to the press. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're just a, a grand bunch, and they, they, uh, a few more like this, and I think we can uh, yeah. get people thinking in different terms. Yeah, yeah, we can get them. Uh, well, of course, they'll they can get equal time, I think, as they move around, and uh, that's good. And uh, Carrie may start to wear a little thin in time. Well, there have been some fascinating stories about him. You know, there's one out now that his own organization is going to dump him. And uh, we've gotten out to the wire services the fact that he refused to debate O'Neill. Mm -hmm. I think he's beginning to tarnish. I think his image is tarnishing. And this, these young fellows, we've we've had some luck getting them placed. Uh, Have you? Yes, sir. Good. And they'll be on. They'll. You, we'll start seeing more of them. Oh boy, that's great. And they, they really are. They, they haven't given up then. These guys. They, they would, they would give you the greatest lift. I told them that I, I couldn't recommend they're going in to see you. I know we. It looked like it was a fix, but at some time I want to thank them. I said that later in the summer, after they've done more of what they're doing, that that they ought to come in. And I was thinking of it almost as much from your standpoint as from theirs. Be sure. sure. They're just believers, and uh, they think we've done the right thing. Doing the right thing, and right. continue to do the right thing, and they're they're. They they claim that that all of their friends they say to, they they said to me O'Neill said to me I don't know how you fellows survive here in Washington he said when you get out in the country you'll find that people think like we think and he said when you come here and you watch what you have to watch every night and you listen to this constant chatter and this constant bickering at you he said but let me tell you it just isn't that way out in the country hmm. isn't that something well. I think the police news has moved very well this week. <laughs> you know, I just talked to Mitchell, and I think that flap over Murphy made the story bigger. And and actually, on Murphy, uh, I wouldn't have the son of a bitch there uh, because he'd taken Wilson on. I didn't make the decision, but I was delighted that Mitchell Mitchell decided he wouldn't have him because mm -hmm. he took Jerry Wilson on. I wasn't going to have him in that room. Well, I heard from one of my old friends in Boston today, who uh, mm -hmm. Boston Democratic Irish, from the best. Yeah. Paul, I know, and he calls me every now and then when he really gets excited about something. Yeah. He, said, I, he said, I just wish that... He called me after your welfare speech at Williamsburg and yeah. said the same thing. Yeah. Uh, and he said, I just wish you were running today because he said you'd take every Boston Irishman with you. They all love the cops and they hate yeah. the kids. <laughs> he said, you know, their uh, police chief was fine in the meeting, too, you know, the Boston police chief. He oh, sure. Real good. Those chiefs were there. They were refreshing. God damn, they're good Americans. They'd never been in the White House before, you know? Isn't that something? Well, you know, no president ever sat down with the police chiefs and sheriffs of the nation. Did you realize that? No, and I think that's a story we. They ought to told get. me that we ought to get that story. They told. said we have never had it. 
and we just didn't, we, we were just so overwhelmed that you'd invite us and cared for us and were willing to sit with us and stand with us. Well, for Christ's sakes, that's a hell of a note. It really is. And boy, I'm telling you, we were, we had them in there. So we've had district attorneys in and judges and this and that, but never the chiefs, never the sheriffs. Oh boy, they, they were just, uh, they and boy, they were gung-ho. Well, they did a great job for One you. of them said afterwards, uh, the fellow says that we had Eisenhower Democrats in Virginia in 52, and now we're having Nixon Democrats, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Well, we, they did a good job on television last night, too. The, uh, yeah. the head of the association who came on and said that you've done more for the police in this country, or more for the police and for law and order than any administration in history. This is this is very powerful. We could just uh, we got to keep repeating the story, keep 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 it around. You know, you make a little blip and then it drops out like welfare or anything else. But we'll find a way. We got to keep surfacing this story about once every month. There are some there are some kinds of stories that that do carry themselves, and I think this one will. I think it you will. Yes, sir. You you not that we shouldn't keep doing things. We should uh, time to properly, but but uh, people have people get an impression, and I think the, the thanks thanks to the press conference. Uh, which is what my friend called about. Uh, thanks to the press conference, the people will not forget which side you're on on that issue. Well, that probably had some effect, mainly because the press kept asking the question. Oh, God. If, they, I... if the press had dropped it, I mean, it would have been just one answer. But the bastards were thought they were going to gig, uh, gig it, so they kept hitting it. And boy, I was delighted. The more they asked it, I was just hoping they'd ask it again. I sat there gleeful because uh, everyone around here was worried that, my golly, they're, oh. they're trying to put them on the ropes. I said, it's marvelous. You're making the point. Sure. And uh, the more often you answer that question, the way you answered it, and just certainly the better. That's right. Just stick to it. No, sir. I, I, I don't. I never believe. They, we have to realize a little controversy is sometimes is the only way you make the point. And uh, cracking that one, we finally got across the point, at least before a great number of people, that we were strong on that issue. And uh, I've said it many other times, but this time they heard it. Well, it's sometimes a more lasting impression is made by whom you are against than whom you are for. And <laughs> Being against the May Day vandals, as you put it, and against the press, and 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 being badgered by the press. That's right. The combination of circumstances. The, the, there'll never be any doubt in the public's mind where you stand on that issue. And uh, you don't think so? Huh? No, sir. And uh, Dick, Dick Kleindienst picked it up beautifully. Uh, he yeah. drew, drew Kennedy out into an answer yesterday, which, which I, I think is just superb.
Also, we, we, we st we're still still holding at 50 in approval, which isn't bad. It's damn good. With the with the with, with, the, all, with the two drags, the the, That's right. the war and the, and the economy, the economic thing, it's it'll it'll start turning. It's a little slower than we had hoped, but but it'll when it does move, it'll move. In my opinion. I, I think that's absolutely right. I think it's just as, as I said to you once before. It's it, there's going to be a spark, and it will happen at some point when people people start buying again, and and will start something will trigger it off, and it's it's nothing we predict. It'll yeah. the public is very fickle about things like that. Yeah. No, I think you can't talk them into it either. Yeah, uh, Harris, by the way, agrees with me on a thesis I have about the validity of polls right now. The, the public sentiment is very very hard to detect. And right. and it's difficult and it's and it's volatile. It'll it'll shift back and forth. Mm. That the basic serious question that people always have to answer in their own minds when they vote for president is impossible to really assess right now. Uh, right now they're beauty contests because there's no meaning to them. Yeah. The moment you attach meaning to them and people feel well now I'm I've got to seriously exercise pick my friends yeah. and pick a leader. <laughs> a certain Excuse me. A certain degree of seriousness gets into it. It's it's easy uh, to go to the racetrack and bet when you're not putting your money up, mm -hmm. and you can bet kind of recklessly. But when you've got to place that two dollars on the counter, you get a hell of a lot more serious. And this this is why I, I just pay no attention to these things. I think. Do you think the uh, all, both of these all these polls were taken before the salt thing and so forth? Do you think that's had any effect on public opinion? Yes, sir. Really? Definitely. I think it has on intellectuals, but I, I was telling uh, Hollum this morning that, and Kissinger that I seriously doubt that it really affected the average guy. I don't think he knows what the hell it is. But he doesn't have to know what it is, sir. Well, but did it get enough play to really matter? The China thing didn't have much effect. No, know? but it, 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 it does it in a very subtle way. Now, the, the fellow that called me from Boston today, who's been an infallible political barometer for me for 20 years, and, mm -hmm. On, on sort of the attitudes of the man in the street, a yeah. very skilled politician. He's a heck of a lot more impressed by your answers in the press conference to the May Day thing yeah. than he is to Saul. Yeah. On the other hand, the fact that things are going on that people don't understand, that are going on at a very high level, that maybe result in some less lessening of world tensions, uh, somehow people don't quite understand how or why. Uh, is very very reassuring to them, and it's it's one of those things that registers in a less obvious and less dramatic way, but it nonetheless it, it builds a confidence. It, it's a it's a portion of the confidence building may. that that people develop over a period of time, and it's nothing that they is would it, go back and point to. Is it Harris's view that they uh, they help or not? Oh, he he feels very strongly. Of course, he's a uh, he's an intellectual one. Yeah. Uh, but he thinks that kind of stuff helps. He thinks so, and he thinks so. Uh, of course, the thing is that the war so overrides the other international issues that I don't know, but we'll see. Well, but that isn't uh, that isn't going to remain that way. And uh, no, that's going to change. <laughs> it's we still have a few months left. It's it's a it's a pattern that needs to uh, that needs to emerge. Uh, and if people begin to feel that, well, there was a crisis in the Middle East, but you handled it. And there, there has been something happening in disarmament, and it's going well, and the Russians seem to be dealing with you, and uh, things are quieting down elsewhere. This, this builds the kind of confidence that when they, when they come to vote, they get very serious about, as distinguished from, from their specific attitudes on specific points. And I, I, I think that's very valid. I think it's the kind of thing that I suppose that the only, the only effect really polls is on the political types. They may get the impression that uh, you know our congressional types that uh, if they see trial heats closer, that worries. Although the approval thing may uh, may balance it off too. I don't know. Well, the partisan, the, the partisans care. The partisans look at it, and it and it affects uh, sure money, and it affects how spirited your people are, and it. it uh, we don't have any problem with money. None in that respect, and none in terms of the, the partisanship. So I, I think it uh, what it does is is prove very di divisive to the other side, and that's <laughs> it's going to do that. That's damn beneficial. That's right. Did Bob tell you about the Viacom development, Mr. President, with CBS? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yes, they didn't get it. Well, it's it's been held up in a very peculiar way, and yeah. Uh, yeah. I will be seeing Paley in another yeah. week. And, uh, yeah, that's very interesting. We'll just. 
Well, we had nothing to do with it. The guy well, just wasn't there. Well, we, our man left, which was which was the best of all worlds. I would kind of like to juggle that, and if you approve at the right time, uh, deliver it for them. But yeah, with a clear understanding that uh, we did, did deliver it. The idea that first we didn't hold it up, but right. they asked us to help. Oh, my God, they they got to help us a little. Well, if, if they ask us to help, and, and uh, then we, in fact, do help, uh, we have a right to look to them once in a while to be be a little reasonable. A little bit, yeah. They've been a hell of a lot better, I think, in the last... Uh, do you really? Three weeks, yes, sir. Definitely. Why is that? Why do you think? That because of this? Oh, I think, this, I think this is a good part of it. And uh, mm -hmm. I think that they've gotten the signals, and they're just a little nervous. There's enough going on, of course, with ABC, the CATV thing. When you called Goldenson, that, uh, God, that just did it. I, 20 minutes later, his lawyers called me right after your call and said how thrilled he was, how appreciative. And mm -hmm. But I, I, I think the, I think all three of them have uh, improved just a, a might. <laughs> we also have an answer going to Common Causes program this week. Uh, oh, I heard about that. That's and good. it's just splendid. Dolph Droge is on, and he is good. just superb. And they've given us a, good, given us Wednesday night here in Washington at 8:30, which is excellent time. Great, great. That's going around the country. So I, yeah. we're, we're getting a little bit. Uh, That's right. Get our side out. We're getting more of it out. I, I. Good. I feel it's, uh, you see it in little ways, and you see it with these kids who come in, and the, yeah. the, the more enthusiasm that they have now is a reflection of. Another thing, too, about our side, the fact that the networks and have been playing so heavily the negative stuff makes our side new, and therefore news exactly and that and therefore people say well maybe there is another side you know there's always these things there's always a counteraction to these things yes and uh